Hi everyone, this is Carol Hill. This is a video about how to explore historical images on FamilySearch.org. Now I wanted to start out with this article on the Family Search blog called Explore Historical Images Tool Unlocks Data and Digital Records. And I love checking out the Family Search blog now and then to make sure that I, I'm up to date and keep informed. And you can actually subscribe right here if you want to do that for the Family Search blog. But to explain what we're going to talk about today, I wanted to just read a couple of um, paragraphs here because I love how they explain this um, historical records image search that we can do now. So they start out by saying, Family Search, Family Search partners and volunteers worldwide have worked to make over 3 billion records easily findable online with a very simple name search. So, you know, you can just go to Family Search and search for the name and find records. But I'm wondering if you knew that these index records only represent 20% of historical records that Family Search has available online. Can you believe that? There's over 80% of records that are not even searchable yet. So if you haven't found your ancestors by using the main search form on FamilySearch.org, it may be that their information is locked inside a waiting to be indexed digital image. In 2018 alone, FamilySearch added over 432 million new record images to its online collections, but it can take years to catalog and, and index these images so they can be readily searched. But fortunately, this tool, the historical image search tool just came out and it makes it so much easier to find information that, that isn't searchable. Um, and just one thing to note, um, they, Explore Historical Images marks the beginning of a new and different search engine. With this tool, images produced from Family Search's 300 plus cameras worldwide is made almost instantly available. So as soon as they digitize them, then they're made available for us. And so it's pretty cool that we can get into them even though it's, it's a little bit harder to search. So let's go ahead and let me show you how you get to these images. So we're going to go ahead and click on FamilySearch.org and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to this search and if you click on the search you will see the drop down and you can just click on images. If you haven't noticed that this has just been up for a couple months so you'll just click on images right there. And as you can see here is explore historical images. So and isn't this interesting? I don't know if you can you can see this, but there's 4 billion, over 4 billion images are being digitized. And as you can see, it says that counting. So it just keeps going up and up and up. And so what you can do when you come to this page, I love this page because it's simple. You can view the most recently added images. And the main thing you're going to use is this place search, but you can also show more search op options here. And then this just explains down here, why can't I search a name? or search for names, and that's just what I explained before. It's not searchable by name. So um, let me show you this show more search options. What this can do is you can search for the place, and then the date and range, and then the life event. But I'm gonna go ahead, what I like to do when I come in, is I like to actually search for my county and state where my ancestors were from. So they were from Holmes County, Florida. And then as you can see, there's a drop down and it comes up and I can just click on that. You know, you could you could search for a city, but a lot of times the cities won't come up. So if you do search for a city and the county and the state and you don't find anything, go back and search for the county. Because typically most records were kept on the county level in the U.S. And also that pertains to some of the other areas in the world as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just search because I just want to see what new records there are. And so I'm going to go ahead and search the image groups. And as you can see, I come up with eight results right here. So what this is, is it just shows you here on the left hand side is the place that we searched for. There's also a map which you can change and move in. And then there's also some here too. It just shows that again. And then you can also um, change how you want to search to right here, the date, the life event, um, it shows that I have six um, death events, um, which isn't really true. It's a vital record. They're mostly marriages. There's two legal records and then two military services. So I can actually change that. And then there's some other things here, but I don't want to make it too complicated. 
Um, you can also, sometimes um, it might be, even though we've got this record set here, there might be a specific volume that you'll want to look at and it'll narrow it down. So you can use this little filter up here to change what you want to look at. So just to note that too. Um, all right, so these are eight different ones. And so what I wanted to show you is, I'm going to show you this first one right here. There's some things that could be could be a little bit confusing, I guess is the right word to say. So this is like, I don't, for those of you that have never looked at a microfilm, this is like looking at a microfilm. We used to have to go to the library, put these reels on the microfilm reader, and then just go through them, you know, and just roll through them to try to find your ancestor. Well, that's all this is. It's just digitized. And so as you can see, I'm on image one. There's 1187 images. I can go, I can go through them just by clicking on that, okay, or back. See, I can go to the next image and you can see it here. This is called the thumbnail view. So there's just um, all these images that come up and then I'll show you in a minute how, well, let's go ahead. If you want to look at one, in fact, let's look at this next one. You can actually click and this tells me that this item number one is about soldiers or sailors discharge. Okay, so that just tells you what's going to be on that this part of the roll. Okay, and so you can do that, which you'll, I mean, if you click on one, then you're going to, it'll come up so you can read it. Otherwise, you know, if you're in back in the thumbnail view, you can't really read it. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. We'll show you how to, um, over here on the left-hand side, you can zoom in or zoom back out. You can do full screen, which I don't want to do right now. You can do back to the thumbnail, and then there's also this filter, which typically, oh yeah, okay, so it's hard to see, but you can rotate it left or shift it or invert it, and you can also adjust the image, and you can download it. So there's just options here, so I want to make sure that you're aware of that. So that's on this left-hand side. Also up here on the image search, if I wanted to go say to a particular image, which I'm gonna do in a minute to show you, you can just click in there and type the image if you wanna go to that image. And over here on the right hand side too, this tells you there's multiple items or entries on this microfilm, okay? So it shows me that item one entry is vital records, and then it shows me item two is military records. But let me show you something. Did you see already a mistake? So this is one thing I wanted to bring up so that you know there could be a problem. So this actually shows item one, which is actually the soldier's discharge or sailor's discharge as well. So let me show you one thing. So this is item one, it says. So I'm gonna go back. Did you see I went back to the thumbnail view? And then what I do when I come in, I, I just go through this. Well, I don't go through it. Um, right at the first, but I first see what the first item is. As you can see, it was the soldiers, and we're going to look at that in just a minute. But this says this is the end of item one. So what you can do is kind of flip down through this till you get to another black section. And if I were to click on this number two, this says item two is actually marriage record, where it showed over here, item one was the marriage record or the vital records. So that's a little bit wrong. So don't, I guess, take this for, to make, you know, that it's really correct. It could be that it's off. And then one thing, other thing I noticed just recently too, is there's actually an item three. So you may just want, you really should, you shouldn't may, you should make sure and um, go through this. Cause let me show you if I just keep flipping down, cause there's 1100 images and you can see I'm at like 461. So if you just keep flipping down, there's actually an item three. So let's just see where that is. I wanted to show you this because this is just kind of an easy, I mean, it takes it doesn't take too long, but see, here's actually an item three. And if I click on that, that also shows me that there's marriage records. So if you looked at item two with the marriage records and didn't realize that there was another um, item on here, because these are like 1940s marriage records. So, um, so you would want it, you would have missed it. So it's really good to make sure and, and go through these. Okay, whoops, you can also zoom in and zoom out really easily. I'm gonna go back to the thumbnail. So what I wanted to show you is that, how you can find the records. Um, I'm gonna go ahead for this one, I'm just gonna go to item 15 
on these. So the first records, remember, were the um, military records. And so these are not in al alphabetical order. So it's just something that you would have to go through. In fact, I want to show you one other thing before I do that. Um, when I'm on this item one, this next image shows me that this was actually, can, I'm going to zoom back out, continued from another role. So I would want to find the role before this if I'm looking for these military records because they're all not right here. So like I said, it's really good to just, just to be aware of that. You'll notice that as you start playing. If you've never done this, just, just play around with it. That's what I say. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go to image 15 because I found... Um, it's not my ancestor, but I wanted to show you this. So this was an honorable discharge from the Army of the United States. And this was after World, World War I. And as I said, they're not in alphabetical order. But there was this Jesse D. Watford. And he was from my family. My mom's side was from Bonifay, Holmes County, Florida. And so that's where he had actually enlisted, even though he was from Alabama. And so I looked at this and this looks great and it matches up with an ancestor in family search. So what's really, 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 really cool about this is that you, do you see this attached to family tree? You can just go ahead and attach it to someone in your free, in your tree when you find it. And that's what's so awesome about this. You don't have to go, you know, create a source. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that on this one. So, um, so this just said the source title, which I would say it's, um, I would say military. Well, I would say it's the honorable discharge. Honorable discharge from World War One. That's not really the title of, that's the source title, not the title of the microfilm. And then I, what I was going to say here says notes. What is this record? I'm just going to say it is Jesse D. Watford's honorable discharge from World War I. And you could change this up here, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it for that because I think that's fine. Because as long as, because what's really nice is that this will just be attached and someone can come back to this anytime. And you can actually add this to your source box if you like to do it that way. I'm going to go ahead and select a person. And so what I have to do now is find the person. And since I had actually looked at him recently, he's right here, but I could also enter his ID number in. And so, oh, and I forgot to say, before we actually attach, I'm going to go to Jesse Watford. I had gone to his, you know, details page and looked and he had been, I just want to make sure it's the right person because you don't want to attach it to the wrong person. But it looked like he had actually drafted there in Holmes, Florida, and there's not any other Jesse D. Watford. So I know that that's the right person. So let's go back and attach it. Like I said, you could could enter the ID. Let's see if this is going to work if I click on him. Okay, so I'm like, okay, I want to attach it to him. And what's really neat, did you see his spouse and children pop up below and also his parents? So this is the same as attaching a source. You could actually attach this to others that are on that record as well. So a really nice feature that you can do this in one one time just do it all at once so let's go ahead and let's click next and then this says provide a reason you believe this source is a match and i would put that um he he was drafted oh one other thing too that i didn't show you about him back on his sources is that and remember you can check sources by looking here so first off, he was drafted, and then also there's a Veterans Administration Master Index. So when he passed away, it showed his birth and his death date, and so I knew that that, that was also correct as well. So I could go, I'll just say that I, maybe like I checked, this part I'm not so good on. You might be better at knowing what to fill out, but I checked his military draft. Did I not spell that right? Military 
draft registration and his veterans or maybe just say I checked his sources I'll say military sources and wanted oh and it was clearly a match okay that, you could probably come up with something better but I don't want to take too much time I just want to attach that to him so if I were to go over to Jesse now and I'm going to go ahead and refresh you need to always refresh if you attach a source so I'm going to go to him and let's see if that did it um, okay there we go I put the honorable discharge from World War One. so there it is so now that's attached to him so no one else will have to go find that for him so let's go back to here um, so awesome feature to be able to attach so the other thing I wanted to do we're gonna go ahead and go back on the thumbnail and I'm gonna head down to the marriage records because I wanted to show you something about this too when you're searching for your ancestors and trying to see if they're in there as you can see I was telling you the honorable discharge papers didn't were not in alphabetical order so you would just have to search those one by one which is which is kind of not as easy to do so the second item is the marriage record and what I want to do is first show you what you want to do on each microfilm or each item actually is just see if you can find an index so this looks like an index to me so maybe this is a b c d e f g hmm. I don't know if that is but anyway you just click on one and this is E so I I want to go to George so I'm going to go ahead and go so that's probably F is next so you just kind of or maybe not why is that getting um let's see looks like it went backwards for a minute okay so there's F again and I wanted to go to to G because my ancestors last names were George and so what this is is an index where the grooms are on the left side and the females are on the right so you would if you if you know the female name it's going to be harder to find sometimes you'll have a bride index but this is more of a groom index and so you can click here and sometimes it might be after this so so something you really do have to look into and and play around with but I've got an ancestors that George so this is a Miller George and he is marrying a Mildred looks like bulk Balcom. and so this this is what you have to look at is the page number so I'm here just in an index and it probably it doesn't have a page number on it so I'm gonna have to go to page 144 and um, I can maybe add that to this we can try well let's just try let's try three let's just try 350 so up here whoops do you see up here I'm in this image now we're gonna have to go try to find that page so let's just try 50 350 and then I hit the inner to see where that takes me oh I'm on 61 so that's not very far yet <laughs> so let's go to like so here I just kind of play to try to figure out where it is um, so let's go to 440 see how I just kind of I mean you could add it now I'm 151 I'm too far so I can go back on the images so I'm at 149 anyway and you can subtract or you know and probably get to it quicker than me but anyway here's page 144 and typically they're at the top of the page so um, that that's easier sometimes they're on the right or the left depending on if they're you know in, in the book so this is just like what they did on these was take a picture of the book so they digitized each page sometimes the page is separate sometimes they take two at once so so that's why it's sometimes hard to find him but we did find him here he is there is Miller George to Mrs. Miss Mildred Balcom so that's the record and you could do the same thing I did with the military record you could go ahead and attach this to him in the family tree as well so anyway I hope that you'll try this you just you may find some things that you did not know were there I know that a couple of people one person found a death record 
that I had never seen because it wasn't on Find a Grave. Another person had found a birth record of their own father that they had never seen too by going through these like this. So I hope you'll take a minute and try it out and, and learn how to use it and just play. So anyway, I hope you're having a great day and let me know if you have any questions.